Guys, uh, I'm Ray Baxter, uh, the author of Bottom Up Beekeeping, uh, and I've been asked to give an interview by Northern Bee Books about uh, the process of writing this book. I started beekeeping about 15 years ago, and I was I was working as a biology teacher at the time. I'd worked for about 15 years in uh, various high schools in the northeast of the UK. I was a bit bored, to be honest, so I, <laughs> I enrolled on a uh, local beekeeping course with the aim of spicing up my teaching, really. And uh, so I didn't start uh, beekeeping for honey or no money, uh, but I just wanted to liven up my lessons. So. I did a basic introduction course in the Scottish Borders and I took some of that knowledge back into my classroom when I started introducing little snippets about beekeeping. The kids seemed to really enjoy that and it set up a bit of a positive feedback loop really where the kids wanted more so I gave them more and etc. And before long we had a bee club in school and then it developed into a as finding a way to put beekeeping on the timetable in the school then a national qualification was developed in scotland to a point today where there are about 20 schools in scotland offering beekeeping as a, as a national qualification which is fantastic uh, the idea for this book actually came from working with a group of youngsters in 2020 i think it was and each year we would take samples from the debris board and take them back to school and count the varroa mites and uh, try and decide what to do about the the infection that we had and one year the students started raising questions about what else was in the debris uh, so we decided to get the microscopes out have a look and we found loads of stuff that we couldn't explain so I decided at that point in time that when i retired which was two years ago i start to try and answer my own questions about beekeeping and this was seemed like a really good place to start. So I set about my own research project uh, to better understand the debris uh, produced by honeybee colonies. I didn't have a research question, really. I just wanted to make lots of observations and, and thought the best way to do that was to sample the debris every 28 days and measure everything. And I try and identify everything I could find and do that for a whole year. I only did that with one colony, uh, so there may be similarities, there may be differences between different colonies across the country. Uh, more work would be needed to to establish those. Uh, I've learned a huge amount uh, in the process, uh, and it's it is transforming my my beekeeping really. I feel that I've only picked the low hanging fruit in terms of understanding what's going on in the debris, but there is such a huge story to tell there about the colony and the wider environments. If I was to summarise the book, I think the first one is just how amazing honeybees are at recycling and reusing and repurposing debris that falls between the frames. A huge amount of debris falls between those frames and lands on the floor, but it's the ventilation screen that creates a trap for debris which sits underneath that screen, which the bees cannot access to reuse, recycle, dispose of, etc opportunity as, as home researchers or academic researchers to, to use that debris to better un understand the colony. And that debris says a huge amount about the, uh, the physical characteristics and the biology of the colony. It also, and to my surprise, I didn't cons even consider this before I started the project, but bees, because of their adaptations to collect very fine particles in the form of pollen, or also seem superbly adapted to collect other fine particles that may be in the environment. So one of the avenues that was explored in the book was to, to consider uh, honeybees as biosamplers in the environment and look for small fibres. And each month, thousands of small fibres, many of which will be, uh, I believe, microplastics were identified in, in the debris how we prepare and how we decide to uh, do an inspection. Preparation is, is absolutely key in, in all aspects of beekeeping, something I wish I'd learned many years before, rather than putting a beeke beekeeping suit on in less time than it takes to boil a kettle and, and getting in there, but spending a bit of time preparing uh, for what you're about to, to do. Uh, and looking at the debris now for me has, has become a, an integral part of that preparation. Uh, 
influencing if I'm going to do an inspection and certainly how I'm going to do the inspection. It's part of doing the homework, understanding where the colony is, what likely stresses are in place on the colony, etc. And the fifth kind of conclusion for me through the process of writing the book, and I, I really didn't expect this, was it's it stimulated a lot of personal reflection about how I do beekeeping and how we are taught to do beekeeping. Uh, we lift the boxes off hives, we look down. It's very much a top-down model that has developed since uh, the understanding of bee space and uh, the work of Langstroth, et cetera, and uh, the ability to remove frames and shuffle frames at will. Uh, and we can do some incredible things, you know, with, with honeybee colonies with that knowledge. Uh, I'd really not, before doing this study, I'd really not spent any time looking at uh, beehives and colonies from the other way up, from looking at the debris and using that to to guide uh, what I was doing. And it seemed quite profound at times uh, to to change that approach from looking down to looking up. And the the title for the book, it, it took about 11 months for that to develop. And it was through that process of, of just lo looking at the bottom of the hive and, and looking up. It was really no more complicated than that. Uh, back during uh, the times of COVID, my, my wife bought me a present. Uh, but the present was to get me out of the house and have daily exercise. It was a, it was a metal detector. And uh, it wasn't something I'd really considered doing before then, but I, I went out every day for my daily walk and took my detector with me and went looking for treasure. Uh, it took about two years for me to find anything, and I, I eventually started finding uh, lots of medieval finds, finds from uh, between the 1100s and 1300s in this field, and uh, I started researching it, and uh, it seems like there may have been a human settlement in that field, and slowly over time, I uh, started to join the dots and tried to imagine what that uh, human settlement would have been uh, and there seem to be parallels between that and and this is a study you know human beings archaeology is is quite often the study of human waste and as a beekeeper what I've done in this study is is study bee waste and the 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 debris that collects that is collected underneath the uh, inspection underneath the ventilation screen People have thought I've been a little bit crazy, I think. Metal detecting and, and looking at the waste underneath a, a honeybee colony. Uh, hu human waste tells us a great deal about uh, you know, past and present societies. We could tell a great deal by looking through somebody's rubbish bin. Uh, when we pull out the uh, inspection board on a, on a beehive, uh, the debris that we see will, uh, will tell us where the colony is, the size of the colony it will show us how it changes over time. Uh, looking at the individual components or in within the debris will say a huge amount about the biology of the colony and gives us lots of additional information that we couldn't get from just looking at the hive entrance. Uh, and I believe it's really important information for the beekeeper to help them prepare uh, for, for an inspection. One of the really simple things that I've continued to do after uh, completing the research and writing the book is just using my mobile phone to take regular photographs of the debris. And those photographs are time stamps, uh, which gives me a really good record without actually having to write anything down in a book. So I try and take photographs every 28 days. So there's a regular time period and I'm building up over time a record of how uh, the physical characteristics of the debris change over time, uh, which shows me very clearly the growth and the decline of the population, whether there's a, a break in the brood, uh, the varroa count, the chalk brood, whether I've got wax moth, et cetera, et cetera, uh, which is really, really valuable information, I think, before, before deciding to put on a bee suit. It's been an absolute joy writing this book. Uh, and I would encourage others to, to uh, next time they visit the hives, to, to get out their phones and uh, take photographs of the debris and, and study the debris, perhaps take some back to their 
house to to look at uh, using microscopy uh, what's going on in the debris and using that information to inf inform their beekeeping <laughs>